Thank you so much, and thank you for inviting me to speak today. I'm uh, thrilled to be here. I'm glad I'm not in Boston, frankly. Um, uh, and my uh, disclosures um, uh, slide did not make it in here, but I have no disclosures except that I have been pregnant four times, and two of my kids had their appendix out. So um, <laughs> I also have probably taken out over 100 appendices in my lifetime, uh, mostly laparoscopically. I'm going to talk uh, today about uh, the demographics of acute appendicitis in uh, pregnancy, as well as how uh, appendicitis presents in pregnancy, imaging, and uh, we'll go over the differential diagnosis, and then finally we'll talk about surgical management, uh, what to do with perforated appendicitis, and then short and long-term outcomes. The demographics of appendicitis is the most common general surgical procedure in the pregnant patient. The incidence is somewhere around 1 in 800 pregnancies uh, where it is suspected and about 1 in 1,000 where it's actually confirmed histologically. Uh, in the case-controlled studies of, uh, of over uh, 52,000 patients, they found that pregnant women were less likely to have appendicitis than age-matched non-pregnant control. So there is some kind of protection against appendicitis uh, when you are pregnant. Appendicitis is also least likely to occur in the third trimester. Most cases will occur during the second trimester. The presentation of appendicitis is least likely to have a classic presentation. Uh, patients more often are going to present with uh, con complaints like heartburn, flatulence, malaise, and diarrhea, and this makes diagnosis somewhat more difficult. Perforation occurs more often in the pregnant patient and especially in the third trimester. The theory is that if the, uh, the uterus pushes up the abdominal wall away from the appendix and that it, they may be less symptomatic than the average patient who has appendicitis. They also noted that the omentum may not be able to reach down uh, to the appendix in all cases and therefore uh, perforation can be more likely to cause uh, peritonitis. There also is a delay in diagnosis and a reluctance to operate on pregnant patients, which makes it uh, more likely for them to go to perforation. The presenting symptoms, uh, and this was uh, developed from a large study, showed that 96% of patients are going to present with abdominal pain. It is still the, the most common presenting symptom. Uh, nausea and vomiting are quite common, as is anorexia, and some patients may have dysuria. The, signs that you'll find are right lower quadrant tenderness. And there's always been this uh, statement that patients are more likely to present with right upper quadrant tenderness or that the, the appendix would be significantly displaced. It ends up that the appendix may move up about a centimeter, um, but not significantly more than that. Um, some, about 20% of patients, though, will complain of right upper quadrant tenderness instead of right lower quadrant tenderness. Rebound is common, as is guarding. Uh, and the interesting thing is that very few patients are going to have a high fever. Uh, um, and I don't really understand why, but it does seem to be the case that only about 20% are going to have a temperature over 100. The laboratory data is confusing because leukocytosis is present in 80% of pregnant women. And the average pregnant uh, uh, white cell count is 14,000, while the average pregnant with appendicitis white cell count is only 16,000. So your white count may not help you here. They can also have a left shift during a normal pregnancy. Pyuria may also be present in as many as 20% of patients, and very often the diagnosis is missed because the patient is diagnosed with uh, UTI instead of appendicitis. Finally, it ends up that t uh, total bilirubin greater than one is actually a marker for appendiceal perforation and has a fairly high sensitivity and specificity. So if you have a pregnant patient who has a high bili uh, and uh, also uh, signs and symptoms of appendicitis, you may be con more concerned about that patient. Imaging. Uh, can, has already been discussed here today, but I'll just show you a couple of pictures of images. Uh, graded compression shows, a, if it shows a tubular structure like here, uh, you can see this is a acute appendicitis uh, on ultrasound. Now it's very uh, dependent on the uh, person who is doing the ultrasound, and depending on your institution, you may have uh, good luck finding this kind of view, and, or you may not. This also shows a fecalith in the appendix. So it is possible to, um, to use ultrasound, and in some, in some institutions that may be the, the uh, diagnostic. However, if you have a negative ultrasound, you should proceed to other imaging. 
MRI, when readily available, if you can get an MRI quickly in your institution, uh, is recommended by the American College of Radiologists as the preferred test during uh, uh, pregnancy. And the sensitivity is very high. Um, as you can see, the arrow is pointing at uh, a, a acute appendix right here. Um, and uh, MRI should be used if, again, if it is readily available, uh, which may not be the case in many institutions. Finally, CT, as you've already heard today, is safe during pregnancy. Uh, most of the radiation exposure is going to be less than 3 gray. Uh, the sensitivity and specificity is very high, and you can see whether you have uh, perforation uh, or uh, uh, and also you can identify the location of your appendix, which may make the surgery a little bit easier. Finally, the differential diagnosis, there are many other things that can, that can present with a high beta HCG and, uh, and um, uh, acute abdominal pain. One of the biggest uh, ones you don't want to miss is an ectopic pregnancy. Uh, you can also see round ligament pain, pyelonephritis, preeclampsia, ruptured placenta, a ruptured uterus, ovarian torsion, and also uh, inflammatory bowel disease or infectious colitis. Any of these can be confused with appendicitis, but really should, uh, appendicitis needs to be ruled out if the diagnosis is being entertained. Finally, and when it comes to surgical management, there was a systemic, uh, there are a couple of uh, systematic reviews of laparoscopic versus open appendectomy. And um, one showed that uh, uh, preterm delivery was lower in uh, laparoscopic than open, but that fetal loss was higher in laparoscopic than open. This was a meta-analysis, and uh, the review was dominated by one study. Uh, and unfortunately, because this one study uh, skewed all of the others um, uh, due to its size, uh, it, it's, it's really interesting that if you exclude that study, there's actually no increase in fetal loss laparoscopically. And you see that here. Here the study uh, is the McGorry study uh, is weighted significantly higher than any of the other studies. But if you look on average, uh, there actually is no uh, difference in fetal loss between the open and laparoscopic cases. Laparoscopic appendectomy, uh, there are some things you want to take into account when you're going to do this procedure. Uh, when you have a patient, you, after 16 weeks of gestation, you want to use a modified left lateral decubitus position. You don't need the patient all the way over, but you need them over enough to, uh, to prevent the uh, compression of the inferior vena cava. You want to try to keep pressures low. You can put it up to 15 if you need to, but most times you won't need to. Uh, you need to try not to manipulate the uterus. Um, fetal monitoring pre-op and post-op is recommended, but not during the procedure. Prophylactic tocolysis, as you already heard, is not necessary. And uh, there really is no difference in entry technique. You should use what you're most familiar with, as we already discussed. There has been shown to be no difference in uh, injury rate with the different techniques. Now, where you go in should be different, as is already discussed. Uh, the laparoscopic port placement, as the uterus enlarges, should move up uh, to a higher location, and you probably do not want a left lateral port that's going to uh, end up um, um, with the instrument pushing on the uterus during the procedure. Early diagnosis and prompt surgery before perforation is the most important thing that you can do for the pregnant patient who has appendicitis. You also, though, want to consider during the surgery that pregnancy is a hypercoagulable state, and you want to make sure you use VTE prophylaxis. IV antibiotics are also an important part of treating uh, appendicitis. However, despite recent studies about using IV antibiotics alone, it is not recommended during pregnancy to avoid surgery using only anti IV antibiotics to treat appendicitis. Perforated appendix, although there is little data to treat advanced walled off right lower quadrant abscesses in pregnancy, uh, it is not clear uh, whether you uh, can drain these and treat them conservatively or whether you should uh, go straight to surgery. There is actually no data on this whatsoever. It does carry the highest fetal loss rate and preterm labor rate uh, in, in terms of uh, any uh, present presentation of appendicitis. When you look at the outcomes, the negative appendectomy rate is higher in pregnant patients, about 23% uh, uh, compared to age match controls. Um, and this makes sense because you really don't want to miss the diagnosis of appendicitis in the pregnant patient. 
Negative appendectomies have the same fetal loss rate, though, as non-perforated appendicitis. So you do want to be careful, and you want to go ahead and get the CT scan and get the MRI and get the ultrasound and try to get the diagnosis before you go in if you can. Perforated appendicitis has the highest fetal loss rate. It's somewhere between 6 and 35 percent, depending on which study you look at. And for, fortunately, maternal mortality remains low. Finally, if you look at long-term outcomes, a small study looking at offspring of women who underwent appendectomy while pregnant showed no abnormalities. And then fertility does not appear to affect, uh, be affected by appendicitis during pregnancy like it is in non-pregnant women. Uh, and this, uh, by the way, is the son that I was pregnant with at Sages last year. <laughs> and in conclusion, appendicitis in pregnancy is common and required for, uh, pro requires prompt diagnosis and treatment. Ultrasound followed by MRI or CT are indicated when the diagnosis of appendicitis is being entertained. Laparoscopic surgery is likely to be the best approach, especially if the diagnosis is unclear. And finally, fetal loss remains as significant, um, especially in perforated appendicitis. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.